So my name is Tanya. Originally, I'm from Ukraine. I'm 35. I'm a journalist, a happy wife, and happy mother of eight year, eight months old. <laughs> Time is flying, I know, but he's still small, and his name is Judah. And I'm, I'm really happy and privileged that I have this time now to share with you the way God is using Unbound in, uh, in Ukraine, in Ireland, and in my personal life. And I will start from my personal story very shortly, and then I will tell you about my countries. So I, I met Unbound and its ministry almost, I was thinking, almost 20 years ago. <laughs> and when I was in a great need, I needed help. Uh, when I was 16, I experienced abuse, and I was in a place of great fear and shame and loneliness, and I was looking for help. And there was only one person in my class who was very open about her faith. So I asked her to bring me to the church, and she brought me, and the community she brought me in was already familiar with Unbound, because just the very first Unbound session training Neil did in Poland for School of Christian Life and Evangelization. It happened so that some people from Ukraine, from my country, were participating in that, and they were just back, and here I am to get help. <laughs> so it was great. It was great because at that stage I wasn't aware of Unbound and Five Keys and I was just receiving. They told me that the importance of forgiveness, the importance of your authority in Christ and you can take back everything you've been taking from you. And I just followed, followed the prayer. It was very simple, it was very compassionate, it was very friendly and I experienced I, was, I experienced consolation and, and peace. And I was very, very, like, almost shocked because it was, it was easy and at the same time, you know, the impact was, was really great. And during the years, God was continuing that healing. It wasn't like that. I felt peace, I felt freedom, but it, they were stages, you know, God was leading me through. And I'm very grateful for that because sometimes people are asking me now, why, why didn't God just heal you like that? You know, at the very first session, and I said, because he's a great teacher. Through my own healing, he was teaching me the importance, how it's important to forgive people who abuse you, than people, people maybe who were involved in the trauma, people like yourself, because at some stage I realized that the most difficult job for me was to forgive myself. That was the most difficult part in my unbound um, experience. And the last thing God did for me in that story of abuse, because I have so many testimonies, that he, he taught me about my identity and authority in him, because I experienced abuse several times in my life, and that caused that I developed this victim identity. Anytime I, I was abused again by anyone, verbally, you know, physically or whatever, sexually, I felt as if I, I had no power and no right to stand up. It, I, was, I felt that just keep quiet because it, it can, it's gonna be worse if you stand up, just keep quiet. And the best part of my testimony is about my authority in Christ because years ago after the first, very first Unbound session, um, I was going home late night in, 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 uh, by, uh, by Metro and I was on my own, in, it was very late, and uh, in, in the train was just me, another girl, and the man, and the man was basically, I think, on drugs, and he was just uh, molesting the girl, and I was just try to, trying to figure out, I was in shock, I figured, like, trying to figure out what we are supposed to do now with him, because he was quite, he looked quite strong, you know, and so, and then uh, there was a stop, girl ran, ran out, and I was just on my own with that man, and he, he started approaching me and at some moment I just look at him and I felt this power in my heart to look straight into his eyes and say just, you're going to sit down now and don't even touch me, did you get me? And the man who looked so strong and confident himself in a minute, in a second, he looked like a child and he said, I want to leave. And I said, do it right now. And it was just the time of the next stop <laughs> and he left. Basically he ran out. And that was, you know, that was the great time of freedom for me because I was like shaking like that because I was scared. I really, really was scared. But at the same time, I felt, oh, that's it. That's it. This is freedom. 
This is freedom. I am free. My identity. I'm not a victim anymore. I'm a daughter of God. I'm Tanya. You know, I I am free. I'm able to stand up. And it's just very very shortly because it it was like years and years of my healing. But just to to uh, I'm very grateful to God even today because it's. It's going on again and again and again, and it's developing. I mean, the freedom and my unbound story. And what I like about unbound most of all that I can apply it in my everyday life. Life. It's not just one healing I got years ago, and I can tell people again and again the same story. No, I have lots of testimonies, and my one of my recent ones is just when Judah was just born. I had the most amazing pregnancy. It was so healthy, happy. You know, it was great. The delivery was amazing, just amazing. You know, everything was so good. But straight after the moment he was born, it was like, <sighs> and weeks of fear and anxiety. And I was trying to figure out what was. I was just like, what's that, God? Everything was so so great, and there was no reason for me to feel anxiety. Loving, supportive husband, everything I need around me. Just and I was trying, and I found some time for prayer, and I said, "God, I just want to know what's happening, because I believe it's not the way it should be." And I googled, you know, <laughs> mothers are doing this. I googled, and Mr. Google diagnosed me with postnatal natal、uh, anxiety, which is supposed to be the first stage of postnatal depression. You know, all symptoms I fit in. You know, and I was like, "Oh my God, what am I going to do with that?" And then straight in my heart, and they were giving the reasons like that nobody knows what's the reason of postnatal anxiety, but most likely it's just、um, hormone disbalance and tiredness. And I was like, "Okay," but God, anyway, I don't care what's the reason. I don't care what's the root. I know that I'm not choosing that. And I said、uh, during the prayer, I said, and these were weeks already of anxiety. My poor husband, I was crying and trembling. I was afraid to go shopping. I was afraid just. I wanted to sit in my room with my baby, and that's it. You know, just leave me alone. But I said, and I said, God, whatever it is, I'm not choosing that. I choose your joy. I choose your peace. I choose your presence. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce. Anxiety and whatever reason it comes from, I renounce, and I command it to leave my life right now. And I declare that I choose your freedom. That you didn't give me the spirit of fear. I'm not choosing this spirit. I choose your peace and joy and your support, God. And would you believe? In a second or two seconds, I was free. I was free, and it was just amazing. And now I can I can testify, I can testify that I'm a happy and quite peaceful mother. <laughs> so it's one more story, and I, I'm really grateful to God for that. And、um, and now I want shortly tell you how God is using Unbound in my country, because it's not just me in Ukraine who God helped. These are now only thousand people. Because、um, people, several people、uh, from Ukraine who were at the first training in Poland, they brought Unbound to Ukraine, to our Christian,、uh, to our school of Christian life and evangelization, which we are running in Ukraine already for more than 15, actually 18 years, and it was set up in in Ukraine by Capuchins Friars, and they developed this five years course. Of、uh, spiritual like Christian、uh, formation, ongoing Christian formation, and each year it's five years course, and each year is dedicated to certain topic, and the second year is the year of freedom in Christ, and the reason for that is that、uh, developing the course we notice that the first year is encounter with living God. And it's all about God's love and sin, salvation in Christ, and helping people just to meet God, really, really meet living God. But we notice that very often after the first few sessions, people experience the, the presence of God, but then they disappear. And we were trying, we we're praying, and just to know, to understand why they disappear. And we figured out that it's just because they go back home and they face the same sin, the same、um, troubles in the family, the same. You know, unhealthy patterns of behavior and wounds and whatever, and they are not able to deal with that. 
They know that God loves them, but they think that this prevents them. They are not worthy of following him. So we were trying to figure out how to help them with all these problems, and we were looking for some safe, stable, and good model of deliverance, which could help our people to, to get free and to be able to follow Christ, not just to encounter him. So, and our guys came back from Poland excited and inspired, and they brought Unbound model, Five Keys model, and, uh, and we looked at it, and we said that this is what we want to use. And now this school is present, this course is present in 15 countries all over the world, and all these 15 countries through the school Unbound is present. And just, just for you to know the figures, like every year through our school about 4,000 people go through, so it means like, I don't know how many thousand people have been ministered to already and not ministered to because at first the, uh, we ministered to them. We teach them how to use Unbound, to apply Unbound into their everyday life, to be able to follow Christ and to go into ministry. And then we teach them later, we teach them uh, how to minister to other people. And we have teams and uh, people who are, uh, who's, um, for, for some people, it's their main ministry. For some people, it's just the way they can help a friend if the friend is in need. And so it's it's about Ukraine and all other countries. It's like it's Italy, it's Germany, it's Austria, it's Poland, uh, it's Belarus, uh, Kazakhstan, um, Russia, um, at some stage Israel, Ireland, United Kingdom. So it's the map. It's the map. And uh, at some stage, uh, some people from Poland invited us to come to, to Ireland. And uh, um, I came in 2000, I don't remember the year already. I came with a small workshop for the School of Evangelization in Ireland. But uh, some years after that, uh, two gentlemen from Ireland who are present here, pa Podrick and Parik, they invited Neil. They, they came to Poland again to Unbound Session and uh, they meet. Uh, they met Neil and Janet and they got inspired that we need a big conference in Ireland. And it happened and actually happened two big conferences, like in major cities like in Nog, it's like the, the most famous uh, place of pilgrims in, in Ireland. And the other place was Dublin, two big conferences. And then Matt came for another conference in Dublin and in Northern Ireland. So it's developing now in Ireland and uh, God is using Unbound again through our course, which is present also in Ireland and also through local communities. And it's just interesting that, uh, you know, that as Neil says, that uh, um, countries are different where Unbound is present, but people are the same and, and wounds are the same. And I'm looking now at Ireland and it's inter interesting because I'm familiar, you know, with the wounds of my country, of Ukraine, but now it's the time for me to learn the wounds of Ireland. And it's amazing how people really, really need that ministry there because very often when people come and ask for prayer, it's all about anxiety, all about fear and loneliness. And I was trying to understand the reason, and you know that the reason can be different, reasons can be different, but one of the major reasons, and my husband told me that in 18th century, uh, there was a famine, big famine in Ireland, and uh, lots of like millions of people died and uh, lots of children died. And at that stage, parents who lost their children, somehow they made the decision in their heart that that was such a painful experience for them to lose a child, to see a child dying of hunger, that even if I ever have another child, I won't be that attached and close to the child. And during several generations, you could see in Irish families the situation when, yeah, lots of kids in a family, but when you look at the family, you, don't, you hardly see any contact, any touch, any hug, any warmth, you know, it's just, and somehow it was because of that inner decision. And people, of course, they were not aware of that. But very often when people are coming for prayer, it's all about, you know, I've never been loved, hugged, accepted comforted by my parents and so very very often it's just we go back to that generations generations and forgiving 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 and we see that like the river of of feeling is flowing through that channel and we are very grateful for that yeah I'm, am i good with the time <laughs> I, I was training myself you know to <laughs>
<laughs> not to be stopped in the middle. So thank God for that. And I'm sure that, you know, we have lots of stories. My husband has lots of stories. You know, he's an expert who's praying people in pubs. You know, I, Ireland, <laughs> Ireland has a pub culture. And pub, it's not, in Ireland, pub, it's not only the place where people drink, but they, they talk there. And they talk a lot. And sometimes for many, many people, it's the only place where they talk. Honestly, for some reason, you know, they feel free and safe there. And very often I found myself, I go for a dinner with my husband and he starts talking. And for Ireland, it's okay to talk to strangers. You know, it's like, it's fine. And, and my husband always ends up, very often ends up with unbowed <laughs> session. And I'm just eating my dessert <laughs> and, he's, and he's just praying somewhere. <laughs> so just come up and you will, you will, and Parik, I'm sure, has, has the same story. So just, if you want to know more, we are open to share with you. Thank God for everything. Amen.